Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I'm excited to give you a first look at Scavengers. It's a PvPVE game that blends a bunch of really interesting survival and combat mechanics together while simultaneously throwing 400 really smart AI enemies at you in a strategic sandbox shooter. Now, I haven't personally played this game yet, but it's going to be available for a technical test this weekend. Check the video description for details on how to get in. Recently, I got a chance to interview the developers as well, and I want to give them a big thanks for sponsoring this video. Now, I've personally been following Scavengers for quite some time because it's using a new cutting edge technology that I'm really excited about that's called Spatial OS. This tech allows for multiple servers to run a single online environment, enabling more features than would typically be available in a single server instance. Scavengers uses this technology to enable advanced AI in mass quantities that will roam the battlefield. Now to me this sounds super cool since pretty much all large scale games have to significantly reduce AI complexity or the quantity of the AI. If Scavengers doesn't have those same limitations, it could enable a far more realistic enemy and in mass. Now tech stuff aside, the main premise of this game is that life on Earth has been nearly wiped out after an asteroid shattered the moon. On top of plunging the world into an ice age, it's also released a type of infection causing animals to mutate into horrific creatures called the Scourge. You play as a survivor sent from the Sanctuary, a space station orbiting Earth that's run by an AI called Mother. Your goal is to survive the planet's surface, avoid freezing to death, and collect data samples for Mother to analyze. As you play, the weather conditions change dramatically and because you have to manage your body temperature roaming storms can force you indoors or out of an area but while they can cause your body temperature to drop to lethal levels they can also hide you from enemy players both visually and from the game's active radar so certainly one can use storms to their advantage each match has 60 players broken up into teams of three but as mentioned before players aren't the only threat there's the mutated animals and other AI enemies spread all over the map. They range from your typical low-level mobs to powerful mutated bears and human cannibal tribes surviving in the wasteland. Now, when interviewing the devs, one of my first questions was about how intelligent the AI systems were, and they had some interesting things to say. And while you can't kite AI enemies across the entire map, you can get their attention and use them as a trap against other players. Some of the bigger AI enemies are also so fearsome that sometimes you just have to run since defeating them isn't always an option. Now, certain areas of the map feature scavenger strongholds where the scourge is kept in cages. Busting those cages open will unleash the scourge. And booby trapping or using AI enemies to soften up enemy players is a legitimate tactic that even the devs have utilized in playtesting. Another interesting gameplay mechanic is that enemy players and AI all leave footprints in the snow, so you can track enemies without their knowledge just by paying attention to the environment. Now, as you play through a match, the weather conditions gradually worsen, forcing all players into a smaller area over time. Time, but the player area doesn't shrink to a super tiny space forcing everybody to instantly kill each other. The full size map is currently 3x3 three three kilometers and it eventually shrinks to 1x1 one one kilometer playable area. The way you win a match is by racking up points via missions and kills and then extracting them via a dropship. At least one player from your team needs to evac successfully to win the match. So while the play area might not get so small that you're practically breathing down each other's necks, the need to get out of a match alive is still a significant factor. If your whole team gets wiped out, it's game over. But you can revive down teammates, so even if you're the last one standing, you have the option of getting your team back into the fight. From the sounds of it, the developers have integrated many strategies and ways of winning since PvP isn't necessary to be on top of the leaderboard. Gathering data is key to winning, and although you can steal data from killing enemy players, it may not always be the most efficient way to 
climb the ranks. A large variety of objectives will present themselves as the match progresses and it's up to you to figure out the best path forward. Now, in terms of progression and actual gameplay, there are currently seven characters you can play as. You make your pick during the draft phase of a match. From there, you can use the experience you earn while completing missions to call in new loadout items. These items include weapons, grenades, and support items like healing and ammo crates. Each character offers unique abilities and weapons. One has a bubble shield, another can turn invisible. It sounds like there's a pretty diverse range of options to choose from. And because your loadouts are limited to a certain number of slots per item, one player can't be the pack mule for your entire squad. Each player will need to bring in complementary items and equipment to a match. And as you level up your characters, you unlock new weapons and items that you can bring. Now, while on the surface it might look like Scavengers is a battle royale experience, to call it that would be a disservice. It sounds much more like a sandbox experience. The gameplay doesn't just boil down to shoot or die first. It's designed as a tactical game that gives you a ton of activities to accomplish in every match and a wide variety of tools and options to approach all of them. I'm certainly excited to test out some of these strategies this weekend. As for the future of Scavengers, right now it's in a pre-alpha phase. But the devs are planning on supporting it long term with seasonal events, new characters, enemies, and more. They've managed to increase the player count, map size, and AI numbers in a match between recent playtests. So I can only imagine what the future may hold for a game like this. We could see an even bigger map, more players, or even more AI. Now if any of this sounds interesting to you, be sure to hit the link in the description and sign up for this weekend's playtest. You won't want to miss out and I'm most excited to test out this new spatial OS tech and what it can do with advanced AI. Thanks again to Midwinter for sponsoring this video and I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap signing off.